So I've uh, been doing the timing belt on my wife's 2011 Honda Odyssey. And, uh, you know, I'm going through it. And this is, I've done several of these. And I was thinking, you know, there's some, there's some things that I could probably teach you about doing timing belts. Just little tips. I'm not going to go step through step. I'm almost done. But there's some things in here that you could learn that are really important. The last tip that I have for you has to deal with this crankcase bolt uh, the, that goes on the dampener that's down at the bottom of the engine. Now I've already got it off here uh, and everything like that, but it is a pain. And so many people I know have tons and tons and tons of difficulties getting that bolt out of there so that they can remove the timing belt cover and, well, and the dampener first. And there's only one thing that saves my bacon with this, and that is an Ingersoll Rand uh, half-inch drive air gun and I push it up to 150 PSI. 90 PSI didn't do it, 120 PSI didn't do it, 150 PSI and it zipped it right off. And then the other thing that you do is you you go, you tighten and then loosen, tighten and loosen and you allow that impact driver to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and just hitting it and believe it or not, tightening it just a touch, just a hit and then switch it in reverse and then back it up. Uh, it seems to really help a lot. So that's one of the things that I've, I was able to do, and, and that has always helped me getting these, uh, these uh, crank bolts off with the, the tensioner on it. Um, so I'm assuming that everybody knows about top dead center and everything like that. And if I go down in here, you can see the marks on the pulley that mention or that uh, indicate top dead center. And then you can see the marks on the camshaft cover here that also mark top dead center. So assuming that you have both camshafts at top dead center and the crankshaft at top dead center, which is necessary, before you pull the old timing belt out, now this is important. A lot of people say don't mark the timing belt if you're just gonna replace it. But I think that that, you should mark it anyway, and here's why. So this is actually the new one because I'm halfway in already. I'm already like in there. But you can see I've marked it. This is a number one, okay, for the first cam, front cam. And then you see I've marked it right on the timing belt. And then here, I marked it as well. And then if we go down here onto the crankshaft, you see that I marked the bottom tooth of the timing belt right there on the crankshaft pulley. So, let's go over to the old one. I'll show you what the markings were and why I did it. All right, so this is the old timing belt. You can see I've got old written on it, and this is timing, that's number one right there. I just always write that on number one. So that's cam number one. And then here I've got another mark along there for cam shaft number two. And then down here at the bottom, you can see I've got the mark for the bottom tooth of the crankshaft. Now, once I've marked those and I pull this off, then what you can do is you can literally count how many teeth it is between camshaft one and camshaft two of the TDC marks, and you wanna know how many teeth you have from the top of camshaft one all the way down to the bottom of the crankshaft. Now that's really important because when you're dealing with the, with the timing belt, you want the belt tight from here all the way over to the second cam, it's gotta be perfectly tight from there to there and it must be tight from the top of the camshaft all the way down to the crankshaft and if those aren't tight then what's going to happen is your engine's going to be off a tooth and you're going to lose gas efficiency at very best it can be off even more and then you'll wreck the valves in the engine the back side of the timing belt is where the tensioner is that's where the slack can be so just understanding and knowing how many teeth you have between each allows you to mark the new timing belt, just like I've done here. And then what you can do is you can be assured that you're gonna have the proper tension from each point to each point. So one thing about comparing uh, timing belts, make sure you mark the old one, old, or an O or something like that so that you don't mix them up and put the old one back in. I don't think I had this one is so pristine and perfect. I'm now wondering if the previous owner had done it before I thought uh, 
well, whatever. I did it. It's all good. But anyway, make sure you mark the old one so you're not putting the old one back in on, you know, thinking you got another 110,000 miles to go. So then, understanding that you need to have the tension on the front side of the belt and between the cams, then what you want to do is the first thing you do when you're putting on a tie belt. Now this is my method. I'm sure that there's some mechanics who would probably disagree with this. I start down here. Start with the crankshaft. And what you're going to do is you put this on. See this plate here? A lot of cars have this plate. You take that off. You put this on here. Okay. And then what you do is you put the plate back on and just finger tight those bolts. They don't need to be on super tight. But this plate, what it does is it keeps the belt from popping off. There is a little bit of space in there between the belt and the plate so they don't hit each other when the engine's running, but it's not enough to allow the, the uh, belt to pop up off with a tooth. So <clears throat> this can't come off once this plate is on and finger tight. And you gotta remember to tighten those later. Once you do that, then you run the belt up to the first cam. And then you got to go, you usually have to go over like an idler pulley or something like that, which is down here, okay? And then you stretch it really tight and you get that first mark that you made after you counted right on the tiny belt mark. So now I know that I've got the proper tension between the first camshaft and the crankshaft. Then I go from the camshaft here and I go underneath the water pump and I go over here to the second camshaft. Now, this is going to be a lot more trouble. And the reason why this is going to be a lot more trouble is you can see the mark here and then the camshaft timing belt mark is here. So it's off about a tooth. And it's really, really, really hard to actually um, stretch the timing belt or pull it with enough tension to get this mark onto the timing belt marker. So what you do is you put a wrench on this and you just bring the camshaft pulley just a little bit forward. Just one tooth. That's all you need to do. Don't do any more than that or else it might pop in and you might end up in serious trouble. So you don't, you don't bring it forward than that. Just one tooth. You should be able to get it on and then manually you bring it back so that the timing belt marker is now equal to the timing belt marker on the, uh, the, the head. All right, so you've got the time belt marker on the pulley or on the camshaft gear is the same as on the head. And once you do that, then you know that you have the right number of teeth between camshaft one and camshaft two, nice and easy, and you've got the proper tension. So now you can see I've got it on there uh, pretty good. Now the mark won't exactly match the mark that's on the pulley, which is something that always throws me, but that's because I made the mark on the belt independently of making the, the paint on the pulley. So it won't match exactly. So that not, does not mean that my belt is off. My belt is on. I've got the right tooth in the gear in the right place. So now I'm ready to install the tensioner down at the bottom. I've got the, uh, got the belt on the tensioner pulley down there, um, right here. Okay, so I've got this here. You can see it's still pretty loose. We're gonna install the tensioner underneath the pulley and we should be good to go. So one of the things I'm going to mention about moving the cams is they're under pressure. Um, before I do this, they're under pressure, so they're spring-loaded. If you don't want them to slam open or slam shut and possibly drive a valve into a piston, and don't use a wrench that's ratcheted. Use a, a, a breaker bar like this that doesn't have a ratchet so that if it goes one way it, it, or goes the opposite way that you wanted it to, you're not sunk. Um, that's happened to me before uh, on an old Subaru that I had, and luckily enough, um, luckily enough, I was able to do it. And I got this, uh, I've got this pretty close right there, so should be good to go now. And I'm just going to bring it around the back side and put it on the tensioner pulley, and then we should be we should be good. The last bit is you take the belt and you put it on the tensioner pulley that's down there. And once you do that, once you get that bolt down on the tensioner pulley, 
Um, I recommend not installing the tensioner at first because even with the tensioner, but with the pin still in it, there's still oftentimes too much tension on there to actually get it on the pulley. So I recommend not having the tensioner in there. And then what you do is you, you get in there and that's when you install the tensioner after you get the timing belt on the pulley. All right, so when installing the tensioner, it can give you a little bit of trouble because the pulley is gonna have tension on it from the belt and it doesn't wanna come in. So what I do is I install one, did this top one here, and then I rotated the assembly into place, taking into advantage the fact that it has this uh, rounded, kinda, let's see if you can see it, rounded little doodad on the bottom of the lever for the pulley arm. Ah, there you go, you can kinda see it there. So I took into account that and then just rotated it in. But either way, I was able to rotate that in and just finger tight it and now I'm gonna use my socket wrench to do it. So that's my my next tip is once you got the timing belt all placed, this is where the, all the slack needs to be. This and the front end of the belt here up to the first cam and then between the cams, that has to be tight. So this is where all your slack is. So let that be, you know, have a lot as much slack as it can um, and get everything else tight. That's what you got to do. So the other thing that I do, it's really important. I've got the tensioner in, right? I got everything in. I'm double checking. Are my timing belts, timing marks, are they all aligned? Yes. Because I don't want to pull the pin on the hydraulic tensioner before I make sure I double check everything. That's another tip that I'll just say, like I've done that. So you can see right here that pin, as soon as I release that pin, the hydraulic tensioner is gonna push out with a certain amount of pressure on that wheel. And then that's going to put pressure on the back of the timing belt. Now I've had, I've, I've, I've done that before and then had to take it out because I screwed something up and I didn't get the timing belt right or the teeth, the number of teeth right. And then all of a sudden I gotta figure out how to get that piston back inside the tensioner. Um, I used a C clamp, which I told wasn't, which I was told wasn't a good idea, but at a hundred and some odd dollars, I, honestly at that point in time, that was like 20 years ago, I was willing to take the risk because I didn't want to go spend another hundred and some odd dollars on it. But they say you can bend the piston pretty easily. So before you do anything else, just double check all your marks. Make sure everything is in its right place. You've got all the exact right amount of teeth between the crankshaft, first the crankshaft to the first camshaft the sec and the first camshaft to the second camshaft. If this is a single cam engine, then you're, you're, you don't have to worry about the um, one camshaft to another. You only have to worry about one cam uh, the crankshaft to the first camshaft. If you've, got a, uh, if you've got an engine with four cams, like one of the Subaru twin overhead cam boxer engines, uh, that was like my old 98 Legacy had one of those, then, uh, then you gotta make sure you do it again, everything on the opposite side of where the tensioner is. So now that I've got this, I'm basically ready to pull that pin out because I've double checked everything and I know that all my timing or my timing belt and everything is in the perfect place. So one of my other tips, well, I guess it's not really a tip, but a lot of people will always ask, do I have to replace the water pump? Do I have to replace the tensioner pulley, the idler pulley, and all that sort of stuff? And the answer is simply yes, replace them all. In fact, especially if you don't know the car because it wasn't yours, or you bought it used or whatever, you should also even replace the bolts that hold on the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley because um, I've heard stories of those being sheared off because they were over tightened by a previous mechanic or whatever. But if you've ever done the job and you know how hard it is to get to the water pump, just change it. You're here. Uh, it's just one of those things. I mean, I, you know, with this particular car, I had to take this whole engine mount off right here. Because then you look at these bolts. I mean, I'm not sure <laughs> if I really appreciate the engineering that Honda did here, although I usually love their engineering. But see this hole? That's part of the water pump the uh, engine mount bolts go right through there. So in order to, to get to this, I had to pull the engine mount off. The engine mount actually kind of covers the water pump pulley. 
So in order just to do this job, I had to take the whole engine mount off and everything. So I'd, I'd hate in 10,000 miles from now or something like that for the water pump to go and then for me to have to go through all of this just to just to do it. And I'm pretty decent with cars and it's still been like a five, six hour job for me because I wasn't used to this car. And, you know, I can do it in my Volvo in two and a half, but uh, with this Honda, it's taken me a lot longer just because of uh, learning the new car. I'll probably do it in three or four next time. But um, it's definitely a pain. But at the same time, when you're down here, you change everything. I mean, these bolts aren't cheap. You know, the bolt here for the, ten the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley over there, they're like $10 a piece. But at the same time, you know what? It's 20 extra bucks and you never have to do it again. It's well worth it. It's well worth it. And then, the, the you know, the water pump's a hundred and some odd dollars. Um, the other thing that's well worth it is honestly something like this, genuine Honda parts. I am the first person to put on aftermarket parts when it comes to, um, you know, other type things. Um, you know, oxygen sensors or whatever. Yeah, I buy Bosch, but at the same time, like, I don't have to go and get the pay the Honda prices. I solder on the ends. I don't worry about that sort of stuff. But with this, get your Honda parts because they they spec them out to a different tolerances. Um, even if it's the same brand, I know it's Yamada or Asin or anything like that. Guess what? Honda only allows those manufacturers to give them these parts that have certain specifications and tolerances within the bearings. They can make whatever they want when they make an ASIN water or a timing belt kit. It doesn't have to have certain specs for the bearings and all that sort of stuff, but guess what? When Honda asks them to do it, they do. So, you know, a, an ASIN water pump or a Yamada water pump may not be, you know, that you get from Honda will be of a different quality than the Yamada or the ASIN pump that you get in a third market timing belt kit. So I really do recommend um, Honda Genuine parts only and yes always 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 do the water pump always 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 do the tensioner pulley uh, and the idler pulley there uh, and replace those bolts uh, it's just peace of mind and it just makes a lot of sense